In Pico 8 you usually want to draw something onto the screen, that after all is the point of a game. So what we're going to look at here is the Pico 8 screen itself. Now the screen is a square and it's 128 pixels wide running from 0 to 127 and it's 128 pixels high running from 0 to 127. So the first thing that's quite peculiar if you haven't done any programming before is that the y-axis, that's this one here, actually runs down the game from 0 at the top to 127 at the bottom. The x-axis here just runs in the direction you would expect. This means with 128 squares or pixels across and 128 pixels down that we can divide the screen quite easily along here and along here at 63 and 63. So the centre of the screen here is located at the coordinate 63, 63. The top left, 0, 0, and the bottom right, 127, 127. So let's say we want to draw a square over here. There's a command to draw a uh, square within Pico 8, which is called rect. And to draw a filled square, we can use rect fill. And these two commands require five arguments. That is, they require what's called x1, y1, x2, y2, and a color. And it's the same for both of them. And if we look on our particular square here, this coordinate there is x1, y1. And this one down here is x2, y2. And what Pico 8 does is it extrapolates along and down once you put those two values in. So if we want a square over in this top left corner here, we're very near to 0, 0. We're not as far across as 63, 63. So we could use an x1 and a y1, say, of 10. And then we could come along a little bit to, say, here. And let's make this 50, 50. So we're going to have 50, 50. OK, and then we'll do it in a particular color, let's say white, which is 7. So that's going to be our sequence of arguments in Pico 8. So if I come over to Pico 8 itself, and we decide to have a look at some actual code in operation, just let me clear the um, bits and pieces off the screen. So we're going to type some code in. The most important thing we need, obviously, because we're going to be drawing, is a function draw. So I'm going to put function draw in and put the end in place. And the first thing I want, obviously, is to clear the screen. And the next one is I'm going to want a rect fill. And I'm going to put it at 10, 10, which is the top left, 50, 50, which is the bottom right of the corner, in 7. And if I press Escape and run this, there's my square in the top left of the screen. It's a bit difficult to see at the moment because I've made the background black. So if I come in and change my background color here on CLS and I change it to that, if I run now, you can see the Pico 8 screen and you can see my rectangle. So if I go back to drawing on this particular diagram here and we have a look at some things that are going on, we can see here is 0, 0. This point, which was the x1, y1 is 10, 10. This point is 50, 50. And then all the way down here is 127, 127. So let's say we want to put a circle in the middle of the screen, right in the center. Then we know that this point here is 63, 63. So we're going to put a circle there. And to do a circle in Pico 8, we use the command circ or circ fill. I'm going to use circ fill. And this takes x, y, which are these values, where you want the center of the circle to be, the radius, and the color. So in this instance, let's say we wanted a yellow circle in the middle, like I've drawn a, a slightly yellowy circle here. Then we know we're going to want it at 63, 
63 because it's in the middle of the screen. We're going to want a radius of, let's say, 5. The radius is that distance. So if you wanted a circle that was all the way across 10, then the radius is going to have to be half of that, which is just the 5. So we could use a radius of 5. And then we could put the color in for yellow. We can look that up using the sprite editor. So we're going to flick back now to the code. I'll just clear all this stuff off. And we're going to put in our circ fill here. So circ fill, and we thought we wanted it in the center, 63, 63. We wanted it a radius of 5, and we wanted yellow. So to find yellow, we look here at all the colors. And what happens is whenever you hover over a particular color, down in this part here, it tells you the actual name. So if we hover over yellow, you can see color 10. So I'll clear that, and we'll come back to the code. And we know we want color 10. Close our brackets, press escape, type run, and there's our yellow circle. Five seems underwhelming to me. Maybe we'll make it a little bit larger. So we're going to change this to 10, so that the radius is bigger. We'll run it again. That's a larger circle, far, far better. Now, importantly here is the order that you draw things. I'm going to put another rectangle in. And I'm going to draw this if I run the game now. I'm going to draw this new rectangle, um, which I'll probably try and do in a sort of a green color or something like that. So I'm going to try and draw a rectangle here. OK, so it's just going to go like that. And you can see my, um, my green rectangle that I'm trying to draw here. You can see my green rectangle is going to overlap this white square and here. I'm going to put this rectangle running from, we know this is 10, and we know this is 50, and also we know this is 50. So we know how big this particular rectangle is. So I'm going to put this at 40, 40. So we know it overlaps. That's a zero, by the way. So I'm going to put this at 40, 40, and I'm going to put this one here at 63, 63. And I'm going to do it in green. So we're going to look green up in our particular color. So again, clear that screen, go back to my pointer, come into here. So I'm going to put in rect fill. We decided 40, 40 to 63, 63. And we're going to do it in the green color. So I'm going to look in here. The green I liked was this one, color 3. Again, it appears down at the bottom, down here. So color 3, like that. Close my brackets. And if I run this, you can see it's drawn over the top because it's the last thing. The code executes in order. First it draws this rectangle, then this circle, then this rectangle. If I take this bit of code here and I cut with Control X, and I put it here, so it's before these two, and I run, it's now drawn behind. And this can be quite useful if you happen to need to do things where you need layers like this. So depending on your artistic skill, you can start to put something together that's quite detailed using these sort of shapes. So that's how to draw shapes on the screen and how the screen layout actually works. Happy programming.